the other day, uh, I was thinking about how there aren't really enough videos about comic book movies on the internet. And so I thought, why not me? Be a trailblazer and change the game. Kidding. Obviously, mm. a couple days ago, weeks ago at this point, they re finally released Zack Snyder's four-hour-long Justice League cut, the Snyder Cut, as it has been referred to uh, for as a number of years. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Uh, and I watched it, and I wanted to talk about it because it is interesting to me. I love the Justice League. I grew up reading comics and watching the animated shows, and I've always wanted to see a Justice League movie in live action, and the making of this and the version we got in theaters back in 2017 is kind of crazy, and I'm not going to get into all of that, mostly because it's all very crazy and I don't know all the details. All I know is that Zack Snyder was making a Justice League movie, and he went through a major family tragedy, and around that time, he was removed or he left, or I don't know. But they brought in another director to finish slash reshoot the movie. That movie came out. I saw it. People had opinions. And after that, the hashtag release the Snyder Cut movement began. And now it's 2021. And on HBO Max, you can watch Zack Snyder's four-hour-long cuts of Justice League. Now, I do want to say, I'm a fan of Zack Snyder. He seems like a super cool and nice guy, and he has a lot of love and passion for what he does. I think he's a super talented and interesting filmmaker. I'm a fan of a lot of his films, and even the ones that I'm not in love with, I still think are very interesting. And I'm glad he's gotten to get his movie out there. My dream is to make movies, and the idea of making a movie and then people shooting over it and redoing it sounds like a nightmare to me. And, you know, all love and condolences to him and his family for, you know, the tragedy that they had to go through. I can't imagine what that was like. And, you know, I hope, hope he's okay. And I also want to say that I don't make videos on movies I don't like. I don't make videos on any form of art that I don't like. There's enough negative stuff out there on the internet. And I've always wanted my channel to be more of just like me and my friends talking about things that we love, not things we don't. So when I say this, I hope it does not come off as disrespectful in any way because I'm sure a ton of hard work went into making it. But the 2017 cut of Justice League that I saw in theaters a few years ago was not for me. Uh, I, was, I was looking forward to it. I liked all the people involved, just was not for me. All, all respectfully, as respectful as I can say that, it just- It was my cup of tea. <laughs> I enjoy Man of Steel. I know it's a divisive film, but but I like it. Uh, Batman v Superman. I enjoyed that movie as well. I have my problems with it. It's not perfect. It's not one of my favorite comic book movies. Like, there were things that I didn't like about it. But overall, I still thought it was mostly good. So when they announced they would be releasing Zack Snyder's cut of the film, I was looking forward to it. I didn't know if I'd love it or if it would fix any of the issues that I had with the other. But I was interested because... I do really love these characters, and I really wanted there to be a Justice League movie that I really, really, really enjoyed, and I thought maybe this was a second chance for me to finally get to enjoy the Justice League movie, so um, I watched Zack Snyder's Justice League, me and my brother did together all four hours of it, and I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that it was a lot of fun. It was a really cool an entertaining movie and I thought story-wise it's you know it's very similar to the other version but almost everything for me is better in this version the story is more fleshed out the characters are more developed the effects are much better the performances are way better just as soon as it starts just visually I was already happy because it just looked better to me and I loved the team I, I, I thought that I really just bought them as a team together, you know, them working together. They really felt like their chemistry just worked a lot better. And, and I really bought them. And but I, I just really I bought them as a team. And it is four hours. So he had a, a lot of time, a runtime. The majority of filmmakers will never get. But what I did enjoy about it was that it never felt rushed. We got to meet every new character and we spent time with them and developed them. And I know these characters from the comics, but these are in some cases very different versions than the ones from the comics. So I appreciate that we got to know them more, especially Cyborg, who I was really indifferent to in the other version. In this one, he's the heart of the film, his story and his journey with finding out who he is and his relationship with his father. All of that I was really invested in and Ray Fisher did 
a brilliant job. I thought he was awesome. Ezra Miller's Flash, I also enjoyed a lot more. Uh, Batman, I thought Ben Affleck was super great in this version. I think he gives a really good performance. And Steppenwolf became a really interesting villain to me. And this version, I really dug him in his whole journey and the arc that he goes through. And I really liked it. But I just really enjoyed this film. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was, it was, it felt epic. And I want, you know, you want your Just League movie to feel epic. And it was really fun. And one of the more entertaining, uh, you know, kind of blockbuster films I've seen in a while. I really enjoyed it. I want to have a discussion, like a spoiler filled discussion about it with my brother um, and our thoughts. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy. So, you also enjoyed the Snyder Cut. Yeah, I enjoyed it, yeah. You liked it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Would you, like, where would you say that, like, ranks among the new, D- these DC movies, these, like, Man of Steel universe <sighs> movies? I think this is Zack Snyder's best movie. Dang. Based Shots the fired previous, at too. Sucker Punch. Oh, yeah, Sucker Punch. Shots fired at the Owls of Gahul. The Owls of Gahul. Like, I've never seen Dawn of the Dead. Shots the fired at uh, Sucker Punch. 300. 300. Yeah, you haven't seen 300. Men with spears, shirtless. You haven't seen 300. Sparta. Yeah, so we both saw the Snyder Cut and enjoyed it. I've actually... I We watched it. It's four hours long, so it's not one of those movies you can just, like, watch a lot. It's no. got to be, like... I got to, like, set aside, you know, a whole day to mm-hmm. watch it. Um... You know, it's like one of those movies, but um, I have rewatched bits from it since then that I've enjoyed because I think I think it's a fun, like it's a fun, entertaining ride. Mm-hmm. Um, so first off, I think from the jump, this movie is significantly better than the other one, just because its opening is not a that little, camera phone little image boy, you know, camera, of uh, yeah. yeah, it's not in the, the CGI face because the mustache stuff when you compare like if you compare the two like one of them with this weird shaky like iphone footage and then this like beautiful like like it looked like a painting of like of superman being killed and he's like that you know like that's a lot and it It goes through the city and like through the ocean and everybody hears like the rumble and it's just from the jump it's just it's quite a bit better i bet it feels like a justice league movie it feels Does it feel epic. Like a... This movie feels epic. Yeah. And like the Avengers movies, like the first Avengers feels like this epic event. Infinity War feels epic. Endgame surely feels epic. Like when these big sort of big team up and even like even non-team up movies like The Dark Knight Rises feels epic. Epic, yeah. Like, and Justice League is something you want to feel epic. And the other Justice League movie did not feel that way. This does though from the very beginning it feels like this epic. And like the length obviously adds to that but it's just the scope of it all and all these characters and it just feels like a big moment and it also it feels um it feels like the characters feel like the characters from the previous one yeah like this batman is clearly like he's a batman who's gone through this arc from batman v superman definitely yeah but he still feel like it still feels like that's the same ben affleck from batman v superman whereas when i was watching justice league the the 2017 cut that Ben Affleck character did not feel like like the Batman v Superman character in the, any way shape or form. I remember yeah. from the first shot of him in the movie where has that little that little burglar sneaking up the thing. He has a little sack on his thing and a like, sack with and a dollar looks, sign on and it. And there's Batman just on a gargoyle. He should have been in like black and white. Yeah, like stripes and a little a little domino on his mask tip-toes. on his little tiptoes. Um. So then um we, we also it opens with that scene with Aquaman. And it's a different scene. Different scene, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's the same kind of scene, but it's different. And it's like, from the moment it starts and you see like Ben Affleck's Batman, Batflick, on that mountain. Mm-hmm. And it just, the qual- like the, the the image, like the frame just looks beautiful. Better. Like it looks, and it's this, uh, it's a really cool scene. And Ben Affleck's just, and you can tell, because um, I didn't, like when the Justice came out, I was very like, you know, the 2017 one, I was like, Ben Affleck is not very good in this. No. But you watch this version, the Snyder Cut, and he is good in it. Yeah. And it just kind of shows that, like, you know, the reshoots, you can tell which was what was reshot because it didn't seem like this feels like he's really giving a performance and he's into it and everybody's into it. And it just looks so much better. He looks so much better. The dialogue is so much better. So much the way better. it looks is so much better. 
and just the the back and forth between Bruce Wayne and Arthur Curry um, Aquaman is is a lot better and I I love the like the little village but like I li- I like that scene a lot I like the fight with the Amazons that first moment I because that scene's kind of in uh uh the 2017 Whedon cut is that bit with the Amazons and this one though felt more important. Because when the mother box first shifts, everybody eases in and they slowly move toward. And it's like this big deal. Yeah, I remember that other version just being like, "Oh, mother boxes." Yeah, uh, but and like, because like you felt the because I love the Amazons in this universe. Like I lo- like Wonder Woman. Great movie. Yeah, is my favorite movie from this franchise. Like the yeah, whole DC definitely. Wonder Woman is my favorite, and I really like the Amazons and and Wonder Woman's mom and stuff. And just as soon as it's uh, as soon as it starts and you're in and they're in that that place they have their spears out and it's just like this you know what scares us or like and they yell like nothing or whatever I, like it just felt intense and cool and it felt like very uh, like what's about to happen is this big moment and um, when Step Steppenwolf shows up and he looks so much better. so he looks so good I thought I really liked how he looked the voice sounded better and it's the same actor. Um, I think it's Kieran Hines is does it, but he he's super good, and I, I I just immediately loved Steppenwolf a lot better, a lot better, yes. It, and he's he's intimidating and he's scary, and he I like the design of him a lot more. I like that the, the close shift down and up, and um we also get uh uh also I want to bring up um after the Aquaman and uh Bruce Wayne sequence when he goes back to the planet and Alfred's there. Oh, Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Best part of these movies. He's such perfect casting. He just embodies that character super. Even that scene in the Bat- super well. In the Batman Superman where he's coming down the elevator, he sits down, and there's that first time you see Alfred. It's just perfect, Alfred. Even you've gotten too old to die young. Like it's perfect. such a not for lack of trying. Yeah, that's really. I really like that. Um, but I really, I really, so I love Alfred. Um, and then also Aquaman goes to like Atlantis and stuff, and there's Mera there. And I want to say that like, uh. Is Mara British? Because she's British in this version. I don't remember in Aquaman, James Wan's Aquaman. I feel like she wasn't British. I guess maybe she wasn't British in that movie. Yeah, but she's British in this. And also... You're British in real the, life? No. I don't think Amber Heard's British. You're just putting on an accent in this. I... Yeah. Um, But also, um, the, uh, the like, the bubble for, like, so they can speak and what... Like, clearly, yeah. like, this was made before Aquaman was really being done. Because that way they can talk underwater. This... Yes. And also her hair is like bright red mm-hmm. in Aquaman, whereas in this one it's kind of like a blondish, reddish color. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. Um, Aquaman in this, a lot better. My man. But in that movie, it's like, oh, Caldro. Jason Moa, he's dumb and he's fun. And this one was very kind of, he's angry and he doesn't really want to get close to everybody because everybody's kind of betrayed him. And he's just kind of this silent loner that slowly kind of opens up to these people. And that was a lot more interesting than just... Yeah, well, all I think... And and this also probably has to do with the length, um, but just all the characters are developed a lot better in this, and they're more. And I, I like them, but Aquaman, yeah, I I really enjoy Jason Momoa's Aquaman. I remember when he was cast, um, some people were like, oh, like if we're gonna get this just dark and gritty Zack Snyder Aquaman. He's got long hair, and but like, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't really come off as dark and gritty to me. No. Like he's a fun like. He doesn't uh, have a hook hand. No, he needs a hook hand. He needs no, a hook, hook hand, hand Aquaman. No, but uh. But See, like, it's my responsibility. Yeah, but uh, but even like in the Aquaman movie, I enjoyed him, and I enjoy him in this a lot. Like, I really like. Him. He's really he has a lot of he has a charm. He has a charisma. Very charismatic. Yeah, I really like him as, and and I like his his stuff in this as well. But the Wonder Woman bakes bank. Uh, like there's like a bank. They're gonna blow up the bank, but it's gonna blow up a big chunk of the city because they're 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 nihilists. They're nihilists. Uh, they believe in nothing. Yeah. Uh, they they just wanna blow up. Like a city block, and it's, it's an actor from Game of Thrones who's gonna do it. Really? But yeah, he's oh. in. He's he's yeah. I haven't uh, seen Game of Thrones. Don't yell at me. Uh, but so he uh so but then Wonder Woman shows up and saves the day. But this sequence, there's a the version of this sequence in in the the 2017 version. This one is so much better. So and much obviously, better. again, more time. Who knows what all went down with that other movie? But in this ver just. The action sequence is done so well. We get that new like sound that one whenever time Wonder Woman, every time Wonder Woman comes on screen, I that plays. I actually wrote a note down just to say that. that at first, it's like, oh, a new score every single time she does a thing. Every time she's in frame, or Amazon is in frame. 
Every single time. Yeah. But, uh, but um, I mean, I, I didn't dislike it, but I do. It did keep going all the time. But I enjoyed this whole action sequence. I thought it was really cool. And, I mean, I just thought it was cool. And I also, I want to say, um, you know how, like, at the end, like, she saves, like, the, the little girl. And the little girl's like, I want to be like you when I grow up or whatever. She's like, everybody can be me. You could be whatever you want to be. Obviously. Uh, also, what was the line in the original one? What did, they, what did she say to her? Like, well, I... Well, in this line, he goes, I don't believe it. And then she, like, hits him. And the other version, she, he says, what are you? And she smiles and goes, a believer. And then it cuts. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. That's bad. Uh, but the ver- but this version with the little girl, I like that moment just because I feel like Zack Snyder's gotten a lot of flack for Man of Steel and Batman v Superman with his characters being too dark. And, like, he's kind of done, like, deconstructions of these characters and other things. And it's kind of calls for, like, it's a Batman who's, like, been pushed over the edge. And he's going to stab Superman with a spear. And it's Superman who's like, you know, maybe I don't want to be here. And it's this like, is his most optimistic movie. Yeah, but, like, he really did, like, uh, these, the heroes in this one. And maybe that's his whole, from the beginning, that was his plan, this arc for them. But they feel very heroic here. Like, yes. I, they, they, they do. Like, they have a lot of these heroic moments that I really enjoyed. And there is... It is not like a dreary movie at all. Like no. it's, it is an uplifting kind of Faith fun. Alfred. Also, Cyborg in this movie. Oh. He is... Okay, so I like Cyborg in the comics. I associate Cyborg more with the Teen Titans than I yeah. do the Justice League. Yeah, I'm, I've never been like... Cyborg a, always felt odd in the Justice League because his whole thing was like, I'm an outsider, I don't fit in. And the Teen Titans were always like, we're all outsiders, we don't fit in. So it was weird to see like the, him on the Justice League. But honestly, this movie actually made me kind of like it. Yeah, well... Because him being an outsider actually kind of works really well on this because it kind of separates him and makes it more interesting. Yeah, but like, because I... Cause, and I like Cyborg as a character. I've always enjoyed him. Uh, but in the 2017 version, I was like so indifferent. I did not care about him at all. There's like a scene... Like the idea of even a Cyborg movie after that movie was nothing to me. But this... He is so He's the heart of it all. Good. He's the heart of the film. And his emotional journey with his mother and his father, especially his father his in father the film. actually got to me. And um the football game. The that football is game. the greatest looking a football game has ever looked. What's the start in snowing? cinema? Who knew Zack Snyder was gonna pull every character gets a scene where they stop talking and it slows down and Zack Snyder just goes one hundred and ten percent. Every character gets a moment. In this, what's which your favorite? Really cool. mo- what's your favorite silent moment? Your, your uh, favorite music? Well, I think I, I want to. My favorite. I, I, there's one that I want to bring up, but it's at the very end of the film, oh, so okay, I want to say that it, for yeah. the end. But um, I mean, I really loved the cyborg stuff in this. Cyborg yeah. and Flash were the big pops for me because we'd already seen Aquaman as Aquaman movie. Wonder Woman I already love in Wonder Woman, and Flash and, was and not I, annoying. And Flash, but yeah, Flash, and we hadn't really seen Ezra Miller as a Flash except in the other one. I didn't really care for him in that one very much. She was always going on about brunch. Brunch. Oh, I'm so glad they cut all that brunch stuff out. That was, I hated that joke. Um, This one. joke in quotes. First scene, I remember thinking, oh, no, this is going to be more of him being You're in my second favorite chair. But eventually, it, it, it tones down. Yeah, and perfectly. He, he's uh, I really like him in it. I think he's a lot of fun. This but silent my, scene was my favorite though. Yeah, when he's saving Iris. Yeah, I don't know why. I just I really, I really got into that, that moment too. I really got into that. But back on Cyborg, I love the Cyborg, football yeah. moment. Love it. I yeah. love the football moment. It looks beautiful. I love Zack Snyder. I wish he shot all football games. Be incredible because it looks so beautiful. Football always looks incredible in the snow. But uh, I like the how they showed, um, you know, his father tells him like all that you can do. Like with this new technology within him, like all he can do, and he go like how they visually represent like all these things he can do when he's like in his mind or whatever. But also like this idea of him feeling like a monster. Uh huh. Well, I I really enjoyed that. He had and, like, much more of a character in this. Yeah. The other version. He's, he's the heart of the film, like you said. He, he has he, an arc and a character. This made me really like the character Ray Fisher. He has a great performance. You care I would about love him? to see um a cyborg movie. Now. Like I'd be totally cool with seeing more. Yeah. Of him. Uh, but speaking of Flash, I, like I really liked him Ezra Miller in this one as well. It made me really like his character a lot more, yeah. and I liked seeing him like you know he walks. He's like trying his to get dad. like the work at like the dog park, and he has that cool moment where he saves Iris, which we I love that scene. You love the scene. It's kind of similar to um, 
the uh taste of future past yeah or? evan peters has quicksilver that like everything freezes uh-huh. I, I love I the really, lightning effect of just lightning everywhere yeah. and they play a little song uh little not song. time in a bottle which they play in days future very Zack snatter song they play yes um the bit with his father billy crudup i love billy crudup mm-hmm. i apparently they're recasting him for the flash movie they're casting so- him with Ah, a good actor I've seen. I, it's a good actor. Um, so nothing against him. I don't. Remember, I can't think of his name. It's a good actor, but oh, it's Ron Livingston, who is a great actor. He's playing Henry Allen. He's a oh, great. Cool. He's in The Conjuring. He yeah. plays the dad. Yeah. He's yeah, in like Swingers him, yeah. Office Space. He's a great actor. So I'm sure he'll be great. But I did love Billy. He, Billy Crudup has a very small amount of screen time, and in that time, he was so good. He's a great actor. I love he, Billy Crudup. Is one of I think the most underrated actors out there. I love Yeah, he is great in this. And um another one of my another one of my favorite moments is you know like the dark side flashback that they go through and there's like the Green Lantern and it's like Zeus yes. and they're all fighting. Love that sequence. Why in the other version was it Steppenwolf? And not Dark Side there? Why did they not have like why not like you have Dark Side in a scene? But I love that um, that whole Dark Side sequence. Dark Side looks great, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know the actor that plays him. I've seen him on Twitter. He was the actor that was tweeting about him, or whatever. Yeah. He did a great job. Uh, I don't know his name though, but he was very, very good, and it felt like Dark Side. You know, like it was, it you, was great. He looks great just visually. It's, it's amazing that we live in a time where both Thanos and Dark Side looked that great. Do you remember? Do you remember when uh, we were always talking about Batman Superman? I always make sort of a joke of how ridiculous it'd be if we got to see the anti-life equation on film, and they brought up the anti-life equation. Yeah, it's and you know what bums me out though is um, this made me super excited for the new God. The new God, Ava DuVernay. Ava DuVernay and Tom, Tom King. King. Tom yeah. King's writing it, and Tom King is one of my favorite uh, writers, like comic book writers. I, like I love specifically like his Mister Miracle is fantastic. I love his Mister Miracle. His um, Strange Adventures, you know, like he's, I love, so it got me very excited for their New Gods movie, and they just canceled their New Gods movie, which makes mm-hmm. me very sad, because I wanted to see more Dark Side. Uh, but Dark Side looks super cool, and just all like the Atlanteans, and the the Amazons, and it's all these people, and just, it was like a really cool battle that I really love. The only thing that I don't understand, and this is in the Whedon one, and this is in this one. What? When they get the Mother Boxes... And they're going to go hide them away. One of them hides them in like this underground water chamber that's guarded by Atlanteans. The Amazons hide it in this giant fortress. And they have thousands of Amazons guarding it with their spears. And then these other dudes just bury it in the ground like five feet. Five feet in the ground. Nothing. Insanity. Like, that's not going to stop anything. No guards, anything. I could get that mother box. We all could. All you need is a shovel. But I love that dark side little flashback. Um, And I also felt when they come together and they fight as a team, uh, you know, like the first time they fight as a team before Superman's there when they're fighting in the parademons and stuff. Uh, I think that was a great sequence. It was a lot better in this we version. We had the full shot of all of them together. Yeah, it, but also... um. There's no scene where Flash falls on top of Wonder Woman that's real weird and not funny and kind of hilar- creepy. I don't know what you're talking about. That's hilarious, Tanner. That that's was the funniest just, joke I've ever heard in my uh, entire life. Yeah, but I, I really enjoyed that sequence where... Um, I know the one thing that was cut out that I actually did kind of enjoy um, about the Joss Whedon one was the like where Flash is like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And Batman's like, just save one person. That, I did like that scene. Yeah. Yeah, that's busy. But I, I overall, like, it's I, I really enjoyed that sequence. And his dad, Cyborg's dad's there. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's a really cool sequence. Bringing Superman back to life. That sequence was kind of the same, but a little bit different. And but I, I but I did really enjoy the moment. And also when um, Flash is a little back in time thing, a little foreshadow. Yeah, he has to go back to like make the mother box and Superman come back to life. Yeah, and we also see like Lois Lane has just been sad and going to the Superman memorial every day. She's been so sad. She doesn't have a ton to do in this, but Not I really. do like Amy Adams. And when she pops up, it's always pretty cool. She's just sad, you know. And then like the final fight was super cool. I loved um, when Superman shows up. Um, he's got the black suit, which by the way, I black suit Superman is super cool. And I've always wanted to see like black suit Superman yeah. in live action. And I'm not, this is not like a complaint, but in, when watching this, when he comes into like the, the, basically like the fortress of solitude in this movie or whatever to get his suit, like you see all, you see like the suits uncovered and he's like picking a suit 
and there's like a voiceover and it's like this beautiful like superman yeah. moment that's beautiful i Wonderful. love that moment and then he picks the black suit and just thematically it felt like it would make more sense for him to pick the like a bright blue it would have red been suit. so if, if he picked the normal superman suit and when he came back, he was doing very like classic Superman y kind of things. Yeah. But I think that was kind of the intention a little bit. We had that Kevin Costner kind of narration and Russell Crowe as sort of two fathers. It felt like almost like the first two movies were him second guessing whether or not he can be Superman. And there's the one where he does. Like I said, I think the first two movies are Batman's not quite Batman anymore and Superman isn't Superman yet. And everything's kind of dark. And this is the one where Batman's Batman again and Superman gets to finally become Superman. Yeah. It just, I, and I don't get me wrong, like, I get why you do the black suit, because that's cool, and, like, it's in the comic books. Give him the mullet. But I just, I, I just, I, I get it, and I'm not complaining, like, I get it, like, it's cool to see the black suit, but personally, it just didn't fit thematically for me, but it's not, like, a big complaint, I don't care. And also, when, um, at the very end, you know, and it's in the Weedinver 2, when he, like, pulls the shirt away, and it's, that like, been the color. Superman, it should have been, it should have been the black suit, it like, should've... that's... Then... I understand before because that's him coming back to life. Then yeah, it yeah. really didn't make any sense. Yeah, he's like at the Daily Planet. This is his classic Superman moment where he rips open the shirt and to feel the, the the logo. But it's black. It should have been. Um, what I really enjoyed about that final fight, uh, even when Superman comes back, is every single character has a part to play. They have a specific thing that they're doing, yeah. and, it, and they work as a team. Whereas in the other version, it's just they fight and they suck, and then Superman shows up and saves the day. So it's just. Superman's here, so we just have to like. It's it felt like they were stalling for Superman, like, like just, he's the real guy that's gonna save the day, and we're all just gonna barely not. You know, this version, I feel like everybody played as this version. Part. Flash kind of comes in and saves it at the yeah, end. Yeah, like it's not. It's everybody has a role to play. It's not. They're a team. It's not just Superman and his friends. The the Flash sequence in the climax. Oh, the back in time. Yeah, I that was beautiful. So I guess kind of like some final wrap up notes. I did want to say that. Um, I just felt like the film was, the film looked beautiful. I thought that it was tonally more consistent. It was, the characters are all developed well. Even though it's four hours long, it didn't feel long. Like, it it felt like it, like an epic, and I really like those characters. And I would be totally cool with seeing Zack Snyder do another one. I know, I think DC kind of wants to go in another direction away from him. But I've enjoyed his DC movies. I like Man of Steel. I like Batman v Superman. And I like this one a lot, really. I really enjoyed it watching this like i'd watch this again i would too um but yeah um it is very long and there is some stuff that you could have probably cut out that didn't need to be the there people singing a little song about aquaman <laughs> there was nothing that was like i was like ugh, this except i did Just not cut it like the joker the nightmare sequence with joker i just i don't like that joker i don't like leto's joker at all no also they mentioned harley quinn which i'd appreciate if she was there okay more than if he was. there was a movie where Batflick and Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn had to team up. I watched that right now. And the apocalypse, yes. The more Margot That's Robbie, better. the better. Put her. Yeah. At, she's so good as Harley. Like, let that be. Like, put her in all of these movies. I'm yeah. fine with it. Like, I'd be. I, I yeah, whatever. And thanks for listening. Uh, that is me and my brother's discussion on Zack Snyder's Justice League, aka hashtag Release the Snyder Cut. Uh man, I can't believe we got to see this movie. I'm not gonna lie. When they started, like when the like the movements were going on, and it was like release the Snyder Cut, all that stuff. I was like, you're wasting your time. I'm never gonna do that. I don't care. Whatever. Um, I was wrong, and I'm glad I was wrong because I really enjoyed this movie. And that's what you get for you know. Don't listen to me because I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm talking about. But what did you think of Zack Snyder's Justice League? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever it was. Were you disgusted by it? Did you like it more than the 2017 version? Did you like it less? Whatever it was. Comment section below. Thanks for watching.